everybody. This is. I'm going to start again now. <laughs> I can edit this out. Hi, everybody. This is Stephanie Manley with Copycat Recipes. Thank you for joining me. This is a live event, and I've got guests down below here, so they will chime in and correct my bad cooking techniques very shortly, I'm sure. But if you are spending the day at home and you're not shopping, be sure to search the hashtag hangout holidays, holiday hangout, help me out. Holiday hangout, good, I got a nod there. Because you can see other people cooking great things like peppermint bark, profiteroles, baklava, and so much more. So be sure to go ahead and check that out. So this is my last of my holiday baking and I am making pecan sandies. I always knew that it was Christmas time because of what my mom cooked. And one of them was Hello Dolly's. And if you're watching this not live, I'm gonna put a link right there. And you can also check out my chocolate peanut butter balls. The link's right there. So you can watch those videos and check those out. But we're here about pecan sandies today, so let me go ahead and get started. These are really, really easy cookies to make. Um, incredibly easy, and you don't need to have a lot of exotic ingredients in your pantry to make them. My pecan sandies begin with a half a pound of butter. That's two sticks of butter. I'm going to go ahead and put those in my mixer. And then to this, I'm going to add a half cup of, oh, let me change my camera. It's going to run right along here. All righty. So we have a half a cup of butter in here. And next I'm going to stick in a half cup of sugar. I'm using brand new, I'm using organic sugar, so it's a little bit darker, and I'm going to throw it all over my counter because it's better that way. So we're going to go ahead and cream this up. Okay, and to this, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of vanilla. Just a little bit of water. Let me check this out. Now, you can click on the description box below if you're watching this on YouTube and get the exact ingredients. I have them there. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and start adding some of my flour. It's just two cups of flour. This is a nice small batch of cookies, so you're not making cookies for the whole neighborhood, you're just making them for your immediate family. That looks like that's in there really good. And you know what? That's basically all that goes in these. All right, now I'm going to add the pecans right here. Has anybody ever made these cookies with anything other than pecans, like maybe almonds or hazelnuts or something? I haven't, but do you toast the pecans first, Steph? You know, I did not, but I just chopped these up, so they're very nice and aromatic, but they're not toasted. Do you toast yours? Um, yeah, whenever I use nuts and stuff, for the most part, I toast them first. That's a good idea. I probably should have done that. I'll try that next time. All right, so I have some really lovely dough right now. Don't you see? Very nice. It is lovely. It is lovely. All righty. Yeah, I've got a bunch of hazelnuts in my refrigerator right now. Or 
I think those would make really good ones. Yeah, that's okay. a great idea. Sorry, and that's probably very disconcerting moving. Okay. I'm going to whip out my baking sheet, and I'm going to use a cookie scoop because I need to. I think it helps make cookies bake up evenly, and they're all the same size this way. So does anybody else make cookies for the holidays? I've made uh, some apple fritters. I made some apple, apple fritters. fritters. Yes, they're awesome. Okay, I'll have to, so I'll have to do that recipe. <laughs> Michael, you had the best idea for the bacon syrup, and I did taste it. You guys have to watch my other video on um, pumpkin pancakes to get this. But you had the suggestion of doing corn fritters with bacon syrup. That's an excellent idea. How did did you do them? I have not done them, but I did taste the bacon syrup. I'll show you all the bacon syrup. <laughs> does yeah. it taste good? And I mean, does it taste like real good bacon, or is it kind of weird? It's pretty good, actually. It was weird. You wanted to chew it, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that yes, it passed a bacon test. Okay, so these pecan sandies, they don't spread a lot, so you can put them kind of close together. I guess they also call these Mexican wedding cookies. I don't know why. I don't think there's a difference. Maybe someone knows. Is there a difference between these and Mexican wedding cookies? Not overly much. I know that Mexican wedding cookies are usually tossed in powdered sugar once they come out of the oven. Well, that's what I'm going to do. Oh, well, then I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, and probably tequila's involved somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. I don't know that cookies and tequila go well together, but I guess if you've had enough tequila, anything goes well with it. That's the magic of tequila, Stephanie. <laughs> I'm not a fan of tequila, actually. I, I I have tried many different types and I don't I don't like it. But I did have an avocado margarita once that was spectacular. And I would drink another one of those, but other than that, not so much. Now, is that a regular half sheet that you're baking on? I believe this is a half sheet. I got these um, at Sam's or Costco. You should get like three of them for like $20, and they're very nice and durable, so I really like them from there. Okay, and this is an ungreased uh, baking sheet because I think there's enough butter in these cookies, so they'll lift right off. Okay, and now I'm going to pop these in the oven. And sadly, I don't have any cookies just yet, so I guess we'll have to chat while they bake. How long do they bake for? They take, I don't know, probably a good 15 minutes or so. I have a... Uh, Infection, so that for me they're probably just a little bit quicker. So I really enjoy the convection oven. I think um, things brown nicer in it than they do a regular oven. So okay, so you're making apple fritters for the holidays. Anybody else make anything? I am considering making a savory cheesecake deal. I made one a couple of weeks ago with um, some pickled peppers and pepper jelly on top. 
Ooh. And it was really, really good. And I'm going to this party Monday night, and I thought I could bring that as like my little here is a snack for you guys deal. So I did a salmon cheesecake once. Um, Ooh. It, was it was pretty good. I think Denise probably tried the salmon cheesecake at a party. Oh, that was the high tea. Oh, that's right. I had a tea and savory party once. Oh, fun. Did you put dill in your cheesecake with the salmon? I did. There was some red peppers in there, some onions, some Parmesan cheese, a little smoked salmon. The recipe's mm. in my blog, so I'll go ahead and edit that in here. Um, if anybody else wants to look at that recipe, I'll go ahead and throw that in in this video. Um, yeah, and what's the crust? The crust has Parmesan cheese in it. And crackers. It's actually really good. I can't remember the, where I had it the first time, um, but it was, it was quite nice. You eat it with crackers. Yeah, um, I didn't even put a crust on mine because it was just like I just cut it and slapped it on crackers and shoved it in my face. Oh, well, <laughs> that's very good. That's good, too. <laughs> yes, I had this really neat tea party once. We had what? We had a white tea, a green tea, and a black tea, right? And food to go with yeah. each one. So that was pretty nifty. You know, I might do a peppermint bark after watching Gareth's uh, earlier video, too. <laughs> that looked pretty good. It did look good. Yeah, it's tasty. I bet <laughs> it is. I mean, I, I could imagine. He never shares, though, for some reason, over video. He doesn't. He never shares with us. I tried to share the other day, and you would not come through the camera and lick the spoon. What can I say? <laughs> it was very frustrating to see that moose being so close and yet so far away from it. I know. I that moose looked really good. I watched that video this morning. It was good. Yeah, it was. It was real good. And how you can make 32 servings out of one pan of moose is pretty amazing. Or you can sit in front of the TV and just eat it with a spoon, which is what I would do with it probably. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, but it's... That stuff is pretty rich. It's hard to get through the whole pan. I don't know. I'm pretty hardcore, right. Garrett. Are you daring me? Because I'll do it. <laughs> you have to do it live on one of these hangouts so we can all watch. And witness watch that. it. That's right. That's awesome. It goes really well with uh, Maker's Mark, by the way. Oh. <laughs> and you're drinking wine. I might be, yes. <laughs> Denise has spiked eggnog. Oh, lovely. Again, y'all aren't sharing. <laughs> They're not. <laughs> well, but I have baking syrup. Yum. Okay. <laughs> what I have is um, yellowtail. <laughs> <laughs> Gareth, going to go get a drink? <laughs> we drove him to drink. Apparently, I drive my whole audience to drink. So. <laughs> We're, we're drinking with you. This is a but I'm not. It's a festive <laughs> occasion. I'm thinking that I will probably drink for one of mine. I think it will make me <laughs> very relaxed. So the last time I shot video, um, I had a glass of wine while my camera person was here. Mm. Yeah. I, I'm very relaxed in those videos because I shoot... All of my intros and my exits all at once, so I'm, you know, so I shot like seven of those in a row, and I was just like, and what about your fondue pot? And like, oh my God, Stephanie. <laughs> settle down, settle down. You're like, no so, more wine. <laughs> what did you bring, Gareth? What are you drinking? Is that your Maker's Mark? No, I ran out of Maker's Mark. I'm, I'm enjoying some, some lovely Jameson. Oh, oh, Irish whiskey. Which goes in the Bailey's Irish cream. That's right. Uh, yes, and which is why I bought it. But the other reason I keep Jameson's around all the time is because sometimes you really just need to dip your Oreos in a shot of Jameson's. I love it. Okay. I love it. It's an old military, an old military <laughs> treat. That's awesome. <laughs> Well, never. I've never heard of putting um, Oreos in Jameson, but... Uh, it's worth a shot, I mean. <laughs> it is a shot. It's an excellent... It's the best way to eat Oreos. 
For, for some of us, it's the only way to eat Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever made the cake with the chocolate wafer cookies and the whipped cream? Cookie, whipped cream, cookie, whipped cream, cookie, whipped cream, and then put it in the refrigerator and it gets soft and then you can slice it like a cake. It's called zebra cake. Oh, wow. That sounds really good. I've heard of it. I've never made it. Yeah, it's really, really good. You can make your own chocolate wafer cookies or you can just buy the chocolate wafer cookies from the store. But um, mm. I was thinking after watching that Bailey's Hangout that yeah. dipping those wafers in Bailey's before sandwiching them mm. with the whipped yeah. cream might not be a bad plan at all. Absolutely. That's that sound good. And then you can take your sandies and put whipped cream in between them too. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> have, a little, have a little sugar rush there. Why not? Why not? It'd be good. <laughs> I like, yeah. But I liked your idea. So I, Jennifer, you and I were talking yesterday about um, that Trader Joe's snickerdoodle. Right, right, right. And you're saying that you could add cookies and oil to that and just beat the heck out of it and eventually it'll turn into that? I would think if you took, um, yeah, because those Biscoff cookies are like really dry. Apparently yeah. the story behind them mm -hmm. is that this is a fairly recent invention and um, they I guess in Germany it's a big thing and a German friend of mine was telling me about this. They used to dip the Biscoff cookies in their coffee and then spread it on bread and eat that. So somebody thought it would be a good idea to skip the dunking part and just go straight to the spreading. So it's these these um, speculous cookies um, whipped to death with oil. Right. So, so um, yeah, I figured that the chocolate wafer cookies whipped to death with um, some coconut oil would probably not be a bad plan. Hmm. This does sound good. Or you suggested even other things. Right. I, them. <coughs> later. <laughs> I like the one with the gingerbread snaps. Ah, gingerbread snaps. That could be good. Yes. This plain sugar cookie could be good. Probably boring, though. I don't know. Well, it might be nice to have like a neutral layer and then add something on top of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tis the season of overkill, so. <laughs> it is. It is. Then you can put some bacon syrup on it. <laughs> Bloody Marys. Bloody Marys, yeah. Like breakfast. That is breakfast. <laughs> Did I actually see a bottle of Torani bacon syrup? Yes, you did. That's sad. <laughs> <laughs> it's I not real it's bacon. It's what? It's not real bacon. Well, no, but it's there, smoky. There's no salty pig part. <laughs> You know what I was just thinking? You could take that and dip real bacon in it and then bake it and have like bacon candy. Oh, I bet, yeah. So it would be well, like double bacon. Well, yeah. Uh, I've done bacon candy before and I wouldn't want to do it that way. <laughs> maple syrup works much better. Yeah? <clears throat> yeah, maple syrup makes some excellent bacon candy. Very good. Hello. We're baking cookies right now. Hi. Well, we're not Hi, the only Janet. ones. <laughs> Hi. I thought I'd just pop in and say hi. I'm getting set up here. Oh, um, sweet. Looking good. When do you start yours? Uh, in about 40 minutes. With the gluten-free gingerbread cookies, right? Gluten-free. And they're actually dairy-free and egg-free, but... Wow. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's that's going to be worth watching. Well, yeah, there's so many people who um, have so many different sensitivities and allergies. If you can make something tasty with all that free in it, I'm all in. <laughs> well, I've had people come back for more, so. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. I've never realized how many people really have all these um, allergies. I've, 
I know when I've gone to like food blogging conferences, they've got a dairy free table, yeah, meat free, a little bit of everything. It's, it's surprising. Yeah, it's becoming more prevalent, and um, uh, you know, there's more people who are celiac who are finding out that there's interact because it's an autoimmune disorder and it's systemic. Um, often they have multiple food intolerances, and it's kind of you, you, a lot of them sort of weed through that little bit by little bit. Mm -hmm. hmm. Now, do you have um, sensitivities yourself, or you just is, or do you just do this for other people? Well, I do it for other people, um, but I actually started doing it for my husband. So my husband has Crohn's. Um, oh, okay. And so being off gluten definitely helps him manage his symptoms mm -hmm. a little bit better. It's not a it's not a cure all by any means, but um, does make life a little easier for him. So um, gluten, and, we tend to we tend to minimize gluten and dairy. So he seems to be okay with things like butter. Thank God. <laughs> um, but uh, not so good with things like liquid milk. Hmm. So you look okay. like you're getting ready to bake there. So I, I have. The cookies are in the oven, and I did not go ahead and pre-bake some cookies. So um, we've been chatting about unique things to make during the holidays, what you can do with um, cookies like Whip them up into a lovely spread and yeah, yeah, and and how some people don't think bacon syrup is a good thing. <laughs> don't get me wrong, I love bacon, but I I actually make my own bacon, and the thought of bacon syrup is not not something I can, I can hang with. Sorry, I, I just don't roll with bacon syrup. It's just not me. Um, bacon you know, and I, I infuse bacon and booze. Does that count? <laughs> yeah, I've heard of like bacon and bourbon and stuff like that. Yeah, I was just quite, thinking. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it's it's quite tasty, and it's um, you can uh, basically put any fatty thing into uh, into booze. So uh, I know somebody who's done uh, a grilled cheese rum. Oh, uh, <laughs> I think I saw somebody something. Oh, they did a a, a grilled cheese. Bourbon or something like that. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was just thinking, in an apple pie, some of that bacon syrup would be awesome. Yeah. Even better is a bacon marmalade to put into your apple pie. Oh yeah, you. I bet. Bacon yeah. marmalade is wonderful. Over Thanksgiving, I had a, um, I bought a bottle of Rogue Ale's Voodoo Donut yep. ma Bacon Maple Bar beer. It's a very uh, long name. I love the bacon maple <laughs> bars from Voodoo Donuts when they get out to Portland. Um, it was uh, very smoky. I mean, it was like drinking a campfire with a slight kick. I'm glad <laughs> I had some. I don't expect to ever have enough. Right. More. Once is enough sometimes. Once and stuff like is that. enough. Never, once is never enough for those uh, bacon maple bars from Voodoo Donuts. If you've never tried one, you get out to Portland, just stand in line. It's going to take you not more than half an hour, maybe 45 minutes right. to get through the line. It's worth it. <laughs> I do have a cookie question, surprisingly. Okay. <laughs> did you, uh, did you refrigerate or freeze your cookie pan? No, but that sounds like a great idea. I used to, when I used to bake lots of cookies, I would bake with about four pans, so they were all in rotation. So I'd have one that was hot, one that was, you know, practically cold. But Right. So I imagine that's a great way to keep cookies from spreading all over the place, right? Right. Yeah, it depends I, on the cookies. I would think with these, they're not going to be much spreading, but... But a sugar cookie or a snickerdoodle or something, mm -hmm. I like to I like to put the pan in the freezer, then load the pan, then put the pan back in the freezer right. for about 15 minutes, and then right straight into the oven, and I'll rotate my pans for the freezer. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's smart. Mm -hmm. 
I, I heard I saw a tip the other day somebody um, doing spritz cookies onto frozen pans because sometimes they do lose their shape and spread a little bit right. but I thought that was a brilliant idea yeah I worked with a, a cookie maker in Portland um, and she she had a marble rolling pin and a marble pastry board that she would refrigerate overnight so that she could use the coldest possible environment for rolling her cookies and then everything all her pans were in a freezer it was amazing of course so were her cookies but you know what can I say <laughs> I, I'm really looking forward to these by the way I like pecan sandies I hope you I hope you're baking enough to share I have plenty. <laughs> you can come on over okay yeah <laughs> Come on, it's all right. And I have plenty of soup since you know I'm writing that other book. My whole refrigerator is full of soup right now. <laughs> it's not funny. There is. No it's, it's a little funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> you brought this on yourself. I totally did, but they're all tested. Yeah, but there's so much. You just need to start inviting yourself to various potlucks. Mm. I, I think last Sunday I shot a video on Hello Dolly cookies and I brought those to my neighborhood Christmas party. So yeah. the lady's like, don't you want to take these back home? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and here, have some soup while I'm here. <laughs> yes, yes. There's lots of soup right now. There's potato soup. There's mushroom soup. Uh -huh. There is cream of tomato soup. There's another soup in there. I don't remember what it is right now. But good. I'm, I like the soup. <sighs> but next, the next chapter is what? Side dishes. So soon my refrigerator will be full of side dishes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes, yes. And some dessert. I'm going to go ahead and start on the dessert chapter very, very soon. So <laughs> I need to stop. Time for another house party. I'm telling you. Yes. Oh. Okay, don't grab a cookie sheet with a hot with a wet towel. You will burn yourself. Yep. <laughs> Bad idea. Okay. So I have some cookies. They are out of the oven. Perfect. So you're just waiting for them to get firm. They don't really color very much. They don't they don't color hardly at all. Um let me. Show you what I got. Maybe that's why we cover them with powdered sugar. What temperature do you bake them at? I baked them at 350. Uh, okay, good. So you can see that they don't really color up very much at all. Okay. They're very tasty this way. Uh -huh. Okay, so I'm just going to put them in powdered sugar. And break them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I probably should have used my hands. I was trying to be clean, y'all, and <laughs> impress you with my uh, cooking technique there. <laughs> All right. Your hands work so much better. Yeah. Yeah. They're so pretty, too. I love them once they get their little powdered sugar jacket on them. Oh, they do. And it almost, like, the longer that they stay, like, um, in a container, it almost turns into, like, its own little icing or... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these are always, always a favorite of mine growing up. I would eat these over most chocolate chip cookies any day. I do like how you said most. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there is a chocolate chip cookie recipe that I 
David Leet had some involvement in it. Um, I don't know if he was the one that recommended that you refrigerated it for like 24 hours or something. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, but that one's spectacular with the, the sea salt and the little, yeah, those cookies have a little bit of extra salt to them. You use a better chocolate chip than, say, Nestle. And those fresh out of the oven are quite good. I think most um, chocolate chip cookies need more salt, generally speaking. It, like a, just a recipe in a um, cookbook or something, I usually just double the salt right off the bat because they usually need it. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, okay, so I understand if you have high blood pressure that you want to stay away from salt, but salt does so much to food. And, um, it has so much flavor, especially and you need to salt while you're cooking. These people that cook food and then salt later at the table, it's like uh, you miss something there. Yeah. You know? It should even be cooked. It should be salted even before it's cooked. Yeah. Absolutely. And I mean, I definitely think so. But then again, you know, it's, I think this is for people that don't have not restricted diets. So. Well, and ironically, if you salt as you go, each stage of whatever you're cooking, you end up using less salt than if right. you try and adjust afterwards. But honestly, if you've got a sodium issue, you shouldn't be eating a whole lot of cookies. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Spoken from the guy who dips his cookies in Jameson. <laughs> Purely medicinal, I'm sure. That's right. That's right. I know, I know what's good for my heart. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it thins the blood, right? The Jameson thins out the blood. That's right. So do you do that with double stuff or the regular or both? Ah, oh, it didn't come up. No one either. <laughs> I had some cookie martyrs on my pan that didn't lift. Okay. So, as soon as I finish up with these cookies, I'll, I will go ahead and wrap up. Did you call it a cookie martyr? Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> no, they, they kind of got stuck on the pan. So. Right. Those are for you for later. You just take a little spatula and... Right, right. Mix it with some oil and make spread. There you go. I will definitely give that a try. That'll be a whole other uh, blog post. <laughs> you know, they're awfully close, but I can't quite smell them. I, <laughs> do they smell as good as they look? <laughs> yeah, now you're not just helping. teasing us. You're just teasing <laughs> us, Stephanie. Uh -huh. Ah, uh, okay. That's <clears throat> the last one here, so. Beautiful. Yay. Nice. Yay. Alrighty, so that is how we make pecan sandies, talk about bacon syrup, and um, many other things. <laughs> <laughs> so be sure to <laughs> And if you're watching the video on YouTube, please give me a big thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can see what's cooking next. And also, be sure to search out the hashtag holiday hangout so you can see lots of other great holiday recipes from my fellow bloggers. Anyway.